All right, welcome back to another episode of the Perfect Ten Podcast, brought to you by Boot Crew Media. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Jacob Erty, alongside me, as you already know, Daniel Dees. That's right, that's me. Uh, again, also, today's episode is brought to you by the Kelly Gibson Foundation. It is a community-driven nonprofit organization that focuses on supporting first responders, military initiatives, and children's athletic programming through golf in the greater New Orleans and Gulf Coast region. <clears throat> I should have did my vocal warm-up, dude. My, I keep getting hung up on these words. That's all right. Keep going. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the Kelly Gibson Foundation. Uh, for more information, go to www.kellygibsonfoundation.org. Again, www.kellygibsonfoundation.org. Perfect. Um, also, we have a special sponsor for today, our mother's. We do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to them yesterday. Yeah. Happy belated Mother's Day, Mom. If you're listening, why the hell are you listening to this podcast? Please if, don't. Yeah. Turn it off. <laughs> turn it off. Why are you listening to this to begin with? Uh, yeah. I mean, I love the support. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, as long as you hit the five stars, hit the five stars and get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Go subscribe, like, subscribe, leave us a written review, tell us you love us, and then peace out. Yep. You don't want to hear. I mean, if you listen, you get hurt feelings by what I say. That's, that's on, your own fault. That's on you. That's like when a girl checks your phone and hey. sees shit they don't like. Hey, you did it to yourself. Are you asking for it. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay. I have a, a trivia question. All right. What you got? Okay. This one has two answers. All right. Um, I'm, I'm not going to ask you for both of them. I'm going to see it. You're either going to hit one or the other, or I'm, a, I'm thinking you may end up in between. All right. So the question is, who's the old, like, what is the oldest age a woman has ever given birth? Now, do how many years are you going to give me? Well, so the thing is, there's then what? There's natural pregnancy, and then there's um, a C-section. No, what IVF? It, it was, oh, IVF. Yeah, what's it called? In vitro. Yeah. Yeah. So the, there's there's two very different numbers. Okay. So I'm not giving you any range. I'm just saying if you hit between these two, then you get it. I'm gonna say. I will say it's a 15 year window. 69. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> that is in between the two numbers. All right. <laughs> uh, natural pregnancy 59 oof ivf 74 jesus and 74 year old had twins that sucks that's tough how did not kill her <laughs> i mean it doesn't say if she lived or not i didn't read it uh but anyway jeez um couldn't have been happy about it though yeah i got a little side trivia question for you that just popped in my brain okay what president made mother's day a holiday was it like mid nineties? No, you're way off. I mean, not what, not mid nineties, mid 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 like twentieth century. Mm. Was it Reagan? No, way Nick, before that. Oh, way before. Way before. Oh, FDR. Way before. Well, well I mean, not way before. I mean, before. that's early twentieth century, dude. Uh, I mean, early twentieth century. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Woodrow Wilson. Oh, okay. Um, that was a nice little addition there. Yeah. Um. So, wait. Have we even said what we're doing? Oh yeah, we're doing top ten fictional minds. I mean, if you don't read the title of the episode before you play it, that what are we doing fair. here? Yeah. I mean, you are. Uh, this clicking is just, on this a, is just a formality that we're giving. You. Uh. Yeah. Top ten fic fictional moms. Um. Word to your mother. And did you do movies, TV shows, all fictional moms? I did movie and TV. Did you do books? I didn't think about books. I had a book character, but I took her off. I didn't think about books. I didn't until mention, this moment. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any honorable dishonorables? Uh, I have an honorable and I have a super. Okay. I have a dishonorable. Oh, let me hear your dishonorable. <laughs> I got Joe Dirt's mom. That's a good one. I mean, that is an all time dishonorable. <laughs> yes, it is. Left him at the Grand Canyon <laughs> and then tried to profit <laughs> off of him getting fa famous. Yes. I mean, unbelievable move by this lady. All right. My honorable mention I got Stifler's mom from American Pie. Okay. Yep. Didn't think about it. All right. She's the first person I ever heard been called a MILF. Okay. Because I was like 10 when that movie came out. I didn't see it until I was about 12. And I heard MILF for the first time. And when American Pie came out? I thought like we were like 12, 13. 1999, I think it was, or oh, 2000. So we one or the other. Yeah, we were. Yeah. 
And my super mention, she's not a mother technically, but she is a legal guardian. That's why she's not technically not on the mother. So I got Aunt May from Spider-Man. Okay. She was his maternal figure, the only mother figure he had in her life. So okay. I think she gets credit. That's fair. Yeah, I'm out. I, I I, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. Yeah, that's why she gets the super mention. Okay. Um, that's all your honorables. And yeah. Okay. So honorable, I got um, probably the most normal mom of all TV shows of all time. I got Helen Seinfeld. Okay. Jerry's mom. Yeah. She's just the most normal mom. When you say Helen, that's the first name I come up with. Because, like. Sure, she gets involved in his goings on, whatever, you know, but she's just always like, Oh, Jerry, you know, why are you doing that? You know, yeah, she's not like over the top. She's not she's like she's the only normal parent in that show. Well, his dad, also, his dad's not that normal. Eh, he's a little wacky, his dad's a little eccentric. Uh, but anyway, uh, so Helen Seinfeld, uh, I got Carol Brady, I got Edith Bunker. That's a good pick. I didn't think of Edith, and I got the curviest mom of all time, Mrs. Incredible. Yep. Booyah. Elastic girl. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, she can stretch her body. She willingly stretches her body like that. That's the body type she wants. Uh, I mean, I had to put it, dude. She probably did that for Mr. Incredible. I mean, props. Like thick. Thick. Three like, C's. <laughs> just tiny safe. waist, too. I mean, that waist is like the pinky size. Like I could just grab it like a beer can. <laughs> <laughs> so, just in case our moms are listening, I'm I'm, I'm staying all what I was fixing to say. I was, it, Mom, cover your ears. No, I, I got I got to say it now. Just grip her like a, just grip her like a flashlight. <laughs> Had to because people would want to know. I hear you. Inquiring yeah. minds, you know. Um. So that was all my honorables. I guess dive into your top ten, dog. All right, number ten. I got Pamela Voorhees from Friday the Thirteenth. Interesting. <laughs> She kickstarted the whole franchise. Oh, so so you, you okay for giving birth to Jason? But yeah. Does she actually well, do no, anything? Well, yeah, she was the killer in the first movie. Okay. Jason I, wasn't the first killer. He didn't come around to Friday Thirteenth Part Two. Honestly, I I had no. I don't even. Well, spoiler I'm, alert. Dang, dude. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure I've seen it like way, 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 way back in the day, but I never went back and revisited the. Uh, that, like that whole series. I'm a huge fan of the series. I grew up watching that shit. I feel you. That's why I put her. I watched a bunch of horror movies, but for some reason I never got on what Friday the 13th. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh and very interesting story. Well, yeah, she's top the, 10 well, list, dude. She's the so old, she was a murderer. Yeah, because uh so why is she in the top a top ten mother? Because she got vengeance for her son. Okay. Fair. Because before Jason became on Jason, he was actually a, like a special ed kid and and instead of the camp counselors watching the kids swim in the lake, damn. <laughs> I wonder if you could hear that. Dude. Yeah, I heard that straight in my ears. Did you? But uh, no. anyways, so instead of the camp counselors watching Jason drown, like helping him, they were just off to the side doing drugs, having sex. So he died. So the I mom know. ends up getting revenge in the first movie, killing camp counselors. Well, that's what camp counselors do, dude. Well, yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I can't, I have no idea where this list is going from there, but all right. All right. Yeah. So buckle in. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Number nine. I got Peggy Bundy from Married with Children. Of course she makes the list, dude. Smoke show of a mom, but she tried her best. Um, We're going to get back to it. Okay. We'll get back to it. Like I said, when it comes to like of all the moms I have listed, when I say trying their best, she was the queen. Of doing her best and failing. Yeah, I mean, is what we know some people like her. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right, my number eight. Sticking with the Peggy's, I got Peggy Hill from King of the Hill. Oh, yeah, okay. She was probably, I mean, I haven't seen that show in so long, dude. She seemed like probably the most wholesome of them all. She was very wholesome. She when it comes to like cruising the line between cool mom and like that mom you need, she walked that line perfectly. For some reason, every time I think of that, then my, my brain immediately goes to when, um, uh, cause Hank sold propane. Yeah. And propane accessories. Correct. So I immediately went to the episode in my mind where they actually went and got charcoal to the cook. Cause it was so, it was so much better over, over charcoal. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know why that scene always pops in my mind and they have to hide it from him. 
Yes. But Hank, dude. Hank Hill's one of the greatest. We, so we already did. Fictional dads. We did? And we never mentioned him. I went back and looked. Wait. So we did fictional dads in general? We didn't do yeah. TV or movies? No, we did TV dads and we did movie dads. We separated them. We, didn't, for, we fic- didn't do both already, did we? Yeah. Really? We, we did. Oh, wow, dude. I get lost in these lists. We get lost in the sauce sometimes. It is. Uh, what it is. I mean, we are like 170 in. So yeah, Peggy Hill coming at number eight. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's tonight. Yep. All right. So <clears throat> my number ten spot. A lot of people are going to hate on this this pick. Um, but again, I've brought this TV show up so many times because I just love it. I don't know. I don't know why. Okay. Scrubs. I got. I got Carla Espinosa. Never seen it. Sorry. Dude, you gotta you gotta go give Scrubs a run, dude. I'm telling you, Turk and JD. So Carla is Turk's wife. Yeah, and they have I think two kids during the show. Um, she's just your typical like overprotective, but like super loving mother, you know. Yeah. Um, but like as far as like, so my list is kind of a mix between like the quality of the mom and the quality of the character. You know what I mean? Yeah. So she's just she would. Because, like, the, honestly, like, I think Turk was in my TV dad's list. He was. Um, even though, like, even with Carla, like. I think he was. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember. But, like, the kids aren't terribly involved in the show. But, like, the way they play their part as a parent is is solid. Yeah. So, I got Carla in my 10 spot. My number nine spot. Um, famous for one of the, for one of the most uh, memorable lines of any movie of all time. Okay. What did I mean? I can't even like I can't even hint around it without giving it away. Okay. Mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. <laughs> I got yeah. Miss Gump. We'll get back to that. Okay. We'll get back to. That. All right. All right. Uh, that's the nine spot. Uh, my number eight spot. So this one is not at like a while ago. Like I was just saying, this one is not at all about the quality of the mother. This is absolutely about the quality of the character. I got Estelle Costanza. We'll get back to that later. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, you, if anybody I mean, watches this show, you should know I'm having her right. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Right. I, I could not put her in the top 10. Rest in peace, Estelle Harris, the actress who plays Estelle Costanza. She died I mean, recently. Unbelievable character, dude. Hilarious. We'll get back to her. Okay, all right. So that was that was my 10, 9, 8. Yeah. Uh, my number seven. I got Amy Matthews from Boy Meets World. Okay, I thought about that. But like I, she was a hot mom when you I, go back and watch it. Like uh, uh, probably just because like I couldn't think of, I couldn't remember her character that much. Like what part she, I remember the dad more than I remember the mom. She kept the dad level. Cause sometimes the dad would like overstep. Get a little hot headed, a little hot headed. He would overstep his bounds and she leveled him. Like she kept him down to earth. Okay. And that's what made her so great. Yeah. You gotta have, you gotta have that character in there. Yeah. She was like the good cop to his bad cop. Okay. And when he was being dumb, she, she brought him back down. He'd to get earth. all pissed off at Sean. Yeah. And she'd bring him back. Like, no, our son's at, is equally shitty right yeah so yeah number seven amy matthews number six i got tammy taylor from friday night lights the tv show okay i don't think i've ever seen friday night lights when i say she's probably let me look there but like the hottest oh she's by far the hottest mom i got listed uh really oh yeah oh i'm not sure like she was right up your alley like with country mom okay yeah, no, that looks exactly like somebody. I'm not going to say while we're on air, but <laughs> yeah, I'm about it. I mean, yeah, uh, typical coach's wife, but she's also a, she's good at separating her professional life as a guy, a school principal, with her husband being the head coach. She's very excellent at separating that, and she's good at separating being principal and her daughter being student. If that makes any sense? Okay, so like she leaves sure it's it. a tough line to ride. Yeah, she she rides it. <laughs> okay you had a snicker at that didn't you? <laughs> yeah and all, on top of that total smoke show yeah fair yeah she's been all sorts of shit but i can't remember anything she's been yeah, but, no. I know, but i know i've seen her in other things yeah, my brain has not been working right lately well, it is what it is uh that was your that was my seven six okay so my seven spot um probably the most classic mom of all time which honestly like this pick just looking at it makes me think i tried to go back um the uh, the Andy Griffith show. Why did they never show the mom? Good point. Never saw the mom once. How do you mention it? Andy Taylor was just a single dad the whole time. Hold on. My dad has seen every episode religiously. I'm about to text him. Hopefully he texts Who's me the back. mom? 
I don't yeah. think the mom. I don't even remember him ever mentioning the mom. Yeah, good point. Like, I've seen the Andy Griffith show many times growing up. Of, of all the love interests that came in and out of the show, I don't think that mom was ever brought up. Yeah, or not that I can remember. I've I've seen it a thousand times. I have too. Because if you got a boomer dad or grandpa that watched young shows, and great show dad, though. Oh, it's it holds up too. Yeah, I mean, of all the old shows, it's probably my favorite. So speaking of old shows, that's why this this mom that, that made me think of that show. But um, the epitome of a classic mom, the kids are act they're always acting up. Whatever she she whips them back into shape. I got June Cleaver. I was fixing to say June Cleaver. I mean, just you know, fun fact: the uh, the hardest I've ever laughed as a kid came from that show because this this was back when my mom was getting a little dirty, yeah, and a little immature. And one of the episodes. She told the dad, hey, you took it a little hard on the beaver last night. And I just <laughs> lost my shit. <laughs> Look at you. You, you losing your shit. Man. I like, mean, it is funny, dude. I mean, I mean, that's, that's, when, why, that's why they put it in there. Whoever dude. wrote for that show knew what they were doing when she oh, said that. that. When she said, percent. you're a little hard on the beaver last night. Dude, I lost my damn mind. Well, of course, like, dude. I, like my little dirty ass <laughs> mind. When I, I was probably like 12, 11, 12 years old. Train drink. Drink. But, dude, when she said you're a little hard on the beaver, dude, that was just one of the hardest I've ever laughed Obviously, this. that's why they put it in there. Yeah. That's a good pick. <laughs> so, I got June Cleaver in the seventh spot. My number six spot, you said it earlier. I got – uh oh, dude, what? Oh, hold on. Fred. Right Lang- on your hat. Yeah, it was bothering Lingering me. in there. Thank okay. God he got it. Uh, um, Sixth spot, the most stacked mom in TV history. I got Peggy Bundy. Yeah. Curves. <laughs> I mean, she's got some, she's got a figure and just, she wanted to be normal so bad, but she can never, she it. was just so, she was just like the stereotypical big titty bimbo, hot, dumb, but like she always kept Al on his toes. Yeah. You know, he gave her hell. Gave her, I mean, rightfully he, so. He gave she, everybody hell. Yeah. He gave everybody hell. He was a good Eagle Terrier. Everybody got that, but she did keep him so, you know that was like, like for her drive chicken. to wanting to be normal though right she knew that they were white trash <laughs> <laughs> but peggy like, bundy i mean she had to make the top 10 list didn't quite crack the top five but you know it is what it is that's a good pick so that was your seven six all right my five you will have no idea who i'm talking about okay but the dads watching this like the young dads my age i got chili healer from bluey you're correct. I have no idea who that Bluey is. Bluey is like the greatest kid show of all time. My kids watch it. And she's like this uh, blue healer dog, Australian, whatever. <laughs> Dude, when I tell you, like, she is a good mom. She, if all you young moms out there, if you want to be better at being a mom, just do what she does. Okay. She's good at raising I little mean, kids. Just do what she does. Like, that's the purpose of the show, right? Yeah. She's guidance. Great. Yeah. God, she, like, she's the perfect goddess. And that's like that dad. Uh, Bandit, also great guy dog. Bandit? Yeah, that's the dad's name. It's a good dog name. I love that name. I love Ooh, that. Ooh, top 10 dog names. That's going to be very short. Or pet names in general. We, uh, say, we say the name and what it, the animal's for. Okay. Like Fluffy, Goldfish. Mm, see, this is that would, that's going to go off the rails because I love... Those are the best episodes. I love people names for animals. Really? I'm the exact opposite for that. Like you see a like a little chihuahua. Oh, what's the dog's name? Kevin. Like, come on. That's hilarious. It's not. Dude, it is you ever met a Kevin Chihuahua? I met a Kevin person. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my dad just clarified for the Andy Griffith. I said, Do we ever see the mom in Andy Griffith? Was she ever brought up? He said, No, she was dead. Yeah, but she was never brought up though. That's what's weird. I said, R.I.P. <laughs> uh but anyway, Chewy, is that what you said? Uh, chili chili that's a good name for a dog not for a girl dog though no i think that's a trash name for a girl dog i would be a great name for a boy dog for like a chihuahua chili Chili, i think of like a little mutt male dog yeah mutt chihuahua yeah yeah, yeah. i get what you're saying that's a good name for a mutt dog but we're going all the rails here number four greatest action mom when i say greatest action mom from an action movie who do you think i got Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor, number yeah. four. We're gonna get back to it. All right, man. I'm 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 glad you ranked that. Of course I did. Dude. I'm so damn glad. I've been pissed if you didn't. Sarah Connor. That's dude. the one pick that I knew you had to have. 
for me to not be upset with your list. Okay. We've actually, dude, we've overlapped a lot more than what I expected so far. What, Same. like four? Yeah. Let me see. One. Two. So far, two. Okay. Um, Two's close to four in the grand Well, scene there's going to be another numbers. one because I already said it earlier. Um, there's probably going to be another one coming up here very shortly. So my, what, five, four? Yeah. Five spot. Um. I, I cannot remember how to pronounce this last name. Mm -hmm. I got Leanne. Tu Leanne Tui? Tui. It is Tui. Okay. She's real. Right. She's not fictional. Well, dude, that's where I messed up. Didn't think about that. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Some... <laughs> it is based on a true story. I guess. The, the... Sandra Bullock from The Blonde Side. <laughs> okay. Because that movie is pure fiction in the grand scheme of things. But I mean, you read the blind side book has absolutely nothing to do with the movie. Okay. Like the guy who wrote it, Michael Lewis hates the movie. Cause he's like, that's not what I fucking wrote. But to be fair, you're right. It is not a fictional. <laughs> Michael Orr is a very real person. That's correct. Uh, what does she look like? Right. I never really got that. That's my dude. That, that is my bad. I completely forgot the fact that that was based on a true story. Dude. I was just going off movies. And I mean, like she did raise, she did raise the homie. What is Leanne this? Leanne Tui's uh Hey. Sign me up. I'll go to Ole Miss. Right? Uh <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that was uh, that was a, a a wild mix up on oh, my Oh dude, part. uh Tim McGraw's character. That was a good casting. They're I mean, I can see that. I mean Leanne, though, I'll take it. Yeah, like she's uh for an old broad? I mean, come on. That's Cougar City. Uh, Yeah, so... Have we done top 10 Cougars? Uh, or uh, They got to be over the age of 45. That'd be the rule. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> Further proof that we love women. We do love women, dude. It's, we say it all the time. What is this? Uh, oh. um. So that was my five spot. Wild twist. Actually, a real person. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fictional first. character, real person. Yeah, I guess <laughs> I, I'll, I'll accept it because that uh, movie's bullshit. My number four spot, I got Marge Simpson. What number? Four. Uh, I figured I figured you'd have that. We, we, we'll get back to that very soon. Okay, I mean, because for obvious reasons. All right, number three, I got Estelle Costanza. You okay. already brought her up. Boom. There you go. Gotta have her, dude. I mean, she drove George insane. And how she not kill Frank Costanza is a uh, feat in itself. I don't think there was any point in that entire show where those two communicated without yelling. Correct. The my favorite moment of Estelle Costanza was when it was during the competition episode and she caught George jacking off and she had to go to the hospital for it. Mm -hmm. She said, what about me? I, I go home and I see my son treating himself like an amusement Human park. park. Yeah. That shit is an all time great quote <laughs> right there. So like, honestly, I think I, we did when we did TV days. I think we both had Frank Costanza too. Yeah, I had him in my uh, super mention, super dishonorable mention. So because he was a funny dad as a as a character, great character as a dad, he was a shit dad. Right. So the thing is, but again, like, but I, I feel hypocritical because Estelle Costanza was also a pretty bad mother because when, horrible mother. Oh yeah, great when, character. Though. Because when George and Susan announced that they're uh, getting married, like they called up the parents and. She said, he, she said, yeah, I'm going to marry George. And she's like, why? Because <laughs> I love him. Why? <laughs> yeah. So, like, I don't like, I don't like strut. Like, just, I tweeted the other day because I just randomly happened to watch uh, Weekend at Bernie's. I haven't seen that in so long. That movie's terrible. I don't know why people love it. So, I, I don't think I'd ever seen it. It's nothing but stress from beginning to end. It's only yeah, stress. Yeah, that's, that's not a Jake Erdy movie. <laughs> no, but still, like, I love Frank and Estelle Costanza, but all they do is yell at each other. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't stand that in TV shows, but they're so funny. It's just, that's just the chemistry between them. It the just actors. is what it like, is. Like, that is the perfect cast. And uh, George, oh, yeah, dude. George, Estelle, and Frank are, like, the Unbelievable. Perfect, like, they could not have gotten that any better. Uh, So, yeah, that was your three spot. That was my number three. Okay, so my number three, I'm assuming. <laughs> so, I was really torn on this one between making it a top 10 pick, which have gotten the top three, or a dishonorable. Mm -hmm. Who can you think of, of all fictional moms of all time, that great mom, like very, very caring, very over, overprotective mom that came around at the end and finally saw 
that like her son was actually happy, but like was absolutely a dishonorable mention. Oh, from, uh, from the water boy. Yes. Mama. Mama Boucher. Well, dude, I forgot about her. I was so torn on putting her in the top 10 or dishonorable. But mention. She like, she stunned poor Bobby. She stunned his growth bad, but Hey, it helped the, uh, the mud dogs. It did. I mean, like South Central LSU. She was overprotective so because her, because his daddy left. Got hit by a train, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just preaching just lies to Bobby but his she, entire she life. Would, she would. Everything was the devil. Like Sarah Connor, she would do anything for him. Yeah, right. That's why she was a good mom. But I, it was it was so hard, like deciding where to put her in this list. That's a good pick. No, I think about. It. But on the surface, she could kill and cook anything. Yeah. On the surface, shit mom. But when you really watch the movie, great mom through and through because, yeah, she protected her boy. And he needed the protection. He was a little slow. To say the least. So, you know, it, it was a, it, it was just a... What the, uh, but, yeah, dude, I, I was very... And I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think The Waterboy is the one movie that you and I like more than other people. That gets a sh- like if you told people to give me your top ten Adam Sandler movies, that'd probably not make top anybody's what? top five. No, it'd dude. probably be my. It's definitely if not my number one, it's definitely my top three. I mean, it's no. I mean, no brainer top five, probably top three. It's uh, either my one, two, or three. I'd have to really sit there. We need think. to figure out a, a way to do a list of character movies. Like so, Sandler has a bunch. Uh, like Will Ferrell has a bunch. Um. Or oh, we could just do those. All right, hold on. I got it. Saturday Night Live alumni movies. Perfect. Write that down, dude. Uh, cause it, cause I mean, you got Spade, you got Chris Farley, Mike Myers. I mean, that's an unbelievable list. But they have to be the lead actor in it. They can't be a side character. Okay. Like for instance, it can't be like can't say Caddyshack because of Chevy Chase and Bill Murray. They weren't the main characters. Who's the main character? Well, nobody's the main character. Probably Danny, if I had a guess. Huh. Okay. All right. I wouldn't. Yeah, they're not the main characters. Gotcha. All right. I mean, I love Caddyshack. One that's of my all-time favorite movies. movies. That's dude. That's gonna be a. That is gonna be a. Let's do that next week. List. I'm about that. We'll do that and. Then I do a food something. Well, already locked in Dustin for next week. Okay. So we'll do top ten sports movie moments and top ten SNL alumni movies. We will get back to back movie episodes. Okay. I'm about it. Um. But yeah, so my three spot was Mama Boucher. All right. I tried to look up her name. It all it said, all I kept saying was Mama Boucher. I think the dad says the name Helen. That does sound right. No, it's Helen. Because remember, the dad wrote uh, the mom, and she he's like, "Dear Helen, who's Helen?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Dang it, Helen Boucher. Yeah, because when I looked up the the uh, cast, it just said Mama Boucher. But yeah, well, I mean, obviously, let me guess. I'm DB. Yeah. Trash ratings. Trash. And so does Rotten Tomatoes. We need to do a special episode where we don't rank anything to give them proper movie ratings. Ooh, that would be like we're not ranking anything. We're just gonna, we're just going to name off some movies. Correct movie ratings. Correct movie ratings. Okay. Because some like like let me, let's look at that would be a twist on like so when we did our most overrated movies. Yeah. Um. Or most underrated, or combine them. Yeah, and, and we're giving them actual ratings. Interesting. We could do a little twist. Highest right? Rotten Tomato score. Well, that movie is terrible, dude. Uh, uh just we'll wa- see. I watched it the other day, one hundred percent. Um, all right. For example, they got The Wizard of Oz at ninety eight percent. Come on. They got uh, The Godfather at ninety seven percent. Overrated. Well, all right. Well, we're gonna have to workshop that. It's gonna be a long. Like we just need a lot of litigation to that. One. I would like to have an episode where we just take a break and just shit talk. Okay, I'm about that. Fair. All right. So that was your number. My number three was was Mama Boucher or my Helen. Number, my know. number two, Mark Simpson. Okay, she's the the best dorky mom of all time. And I feel like, as far as like, I feel like she had some of the best like m- mother qualities, like leadership qualities. Yeah, any, like, like she like she had her moments where she was an irrational mom where they're watching like Lisa and Barr watching like I think it was Itching and Scratchy or maybe some other show. She's like, oh, I don't I find this to be in poor taste. Therefore, I think you shouldn't enjoy it either. 
Well, not, you but know, then again, she would like. Now that like, I think about it, dude, pretty much every cartoon of all time, the dad is always some wacky character, and the mom is like holding the family together. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every cartoon of all time. That's a that's a cliche right there. Good movie, like television cliche. Like the dad's a dumbass, the mom holds it together. Right. Like, why? Why we got to be dumb? Yeah. Why can't the mom be? Well, Peggy. Peggy. Uh, yeah. Well, Peggy Bundy. Fair. That's the only one that disproves that. Like literally, how many TV moms are there? I'm trying to think if there's another like just wacky dumb TV mom. Can't say Lois Griffin because Peter Griffin's way dumber than her. Right. Um. Don't know. Can't think of one. Might be the only one. Well, Kitty Foreman compared to Red Foreman in that 70s show. <laughs> Honorable mention. Fair. But then again, he's kind of a dick, he, too. Yeah, absolutely. He's hilarious. He, she keeps him in check. I don't know. So maybe, maybe it's Peggy Bundy who's only like... She black. took the fall for it all. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, yeah, March Simpson's my number two. My number two spot, you literally just mentioned her, Lois Griffin. Number, yeah. Possibly the most resilient mother in tv history yeah clearly she's way out of peter's league still stays with him even though he does nothing but it sabotages his entire family 24 7 yeah like, he only tries to screw his whole family over <laughs> and she's always there she's probably the funniest tv mom oh, she's hilarious her or, or still costanza could go toe-to-toe for funniest tv mom um but like just just for just the the glue she is for the family the whole family is whack. Yeah, there's not a normal person in there. Off screwing, just screwing up everywhere they possibly can. Um, but she's there holding it all together. I mean, you know, that's that's why I got her in the two spot, Lois Griffin. That's a good one. And she's honorable. I gave her. I'm giving her an honorable. Okay. I mean, I thought about it. I was just, eh, this is not a big Family Guy guy. Oh, I mean, come on. But that we'll we'll discuss that next episode. Okay. All right. My number one. You already mentioned her. I got Mrs. Gump from Forrest Gump. That's your number one? That's my number one. She'll do anything for that boy's education. Okay. Uh, she And she and because of her, we get one of the best movie quotes of all time. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Right. And like she like affirmed, like reaffirmed Forrest, like, look, just because you're wearing these leg braces and you're kind of stupid, that doesn't make you different from anybody else. Even though clearly he is different from everybody else. Yeah, I don't know how this got in your number one spot. Dude. I just love Mrs. Gump. I love I, Forrest Gump. I love Miss Gump as well. Don't get me wrong. Uh, interesting number one. That's my number one. I hear you. She's a great mom. She is a great mom. And like she housed Elvis. Did you? You remember at the I beginning remember when he was like a little boy and he was doing that weird dance? Oh, yeah. And, and, and like Elvis swagger jacked him. That dude, I completely forgot about that dude. Okay. All right. Well, so my number one, Mrs. Gump. Mrs. Gump. My number, number one. I, I you said it already, Sarah Connor. Sonic Car- I like that pick. I'm glad you put her. She birthed the guy that saves the world. That and she protected the shit out exactly. of him. Exactly. She had to fight to save his life. My greatest action mom of all time. Oh, no doubt. Probably one of the best action heroes of all time, too. Like just just the fact just that just a bad bitch through and through. All the way through, you know. Um, I mean, she literally she had to save the world. So he could save the world. Yes. Love her. Love the character. I mean, yeah, just Sarah Connor's just an absolute dog. So yeah. Uh I'm not I'm not disagreeing with that pick at all. This honestly, this list was one of those. It was so hard to figure out a number one. It was. I feel like my I could have had five different number ones. But my one through four, you could arrange it any way I wouldn't argue with. But you. I mean the most badass mom, obviously, of this whole list had to be Sarah Connor. So I was like, oh, yes. there's number one. Easy. Yeah, like she's shotgun motherfucking robots yeah one-handed just mm-hmm. blasting them um all right so um thursday y'all will be getting um niche characters aka minor characters niche all right so that list some amount of reoccurring characters because yeah i they reoccur but if you take them out of the the show or the movie nothing happened like it, it does not affect anything uh i guess my yeah I guess you could completely write mine out and you wouldn't even know it really. Yeah. But I, I basically did like if it's if they're like the tenth on the call sheet or lower. Yeah. You know, like some of them have somewhat like they, uh, most of them have a very memorable role, but they're only in like two minutes of the whole movie. Yeah. Or like only appear five times. You'll, you'll know. You'll series. know when you hear the episode. Yeah. 
Like it makes sense in our brain. That's all that matters. Correct. Um. So rundowns, top ten. Yes. Fictional let's, moms. Let's roll with it. Number ten, I got Pamela Voorhees. Number nine, Peggy Bundy. Number eight, Peggy Hill. Number seven, Amy Matthews. Six, Tammy Taylor. Five, Chili Healer. Four, Sarah Connor. Three, Costello Estelle Costanza. I'm sorry about that. Number two, Marge Simpson. Number one, Mrs. Gump. Dude, we actually overlapped a lot. My I'm not surprised. I mean, I'm surprised, but I shouldn't be surprised. My number 10, Carla Espinosa. Uh, nine, Miss Gump. Eight, Estelle Costanza. Seven, June Cleaver. Six, Peggy Bundy. Five, Leanne Tui, who's actually a real person. <laughs> that was my bad, dude. Four, Marge Simpson. Three, Mama Boucher. Two, Lois Griffin. And number one, Sarah Connor. I like your number one a lot. I feel like I, I I love Sarah Connor, but I feel like for some reason I just feel like Marge, Estelle, and Mrs. Gump are just better for some I hear you. No, I mean, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. But anyway, I hope y'all had a, a lovely Mother's Day. Yes. Thanks for tuning Shout in. Shout out to all you mothers. Uh, make sure you go all hit right. the five stars. Shout out to our favorite mother, Mo. Yeah, Mo Mo. Shout out to you. Um, leave us a written review. Go uh, watch Boot Crew Media's YouTube, all that fun stuff. All right. All right. Peace. Peace.